Hey guys, welcome back. Today in the Untidy Artist, we are making these darling mini gnome ornaments. I think these would be so cute to hang on the tree. I made a bunch of these for my daughter who just got her very first Christmas tree. I also think these would be so cute on the top of gifts. I've been a little obsessed with gnomes lately and I wanted to give a shout out to some of the accounts on YouTube that helped me and inspired me with this tutorial. Shout out to Sarah from Tenderfoot Village. Also Patty from Encasa Con Patty and Sarah from Ruffles and Rain Boots. If you're interested in purchasing gnomes, the cutest gnomes out there are by Renee and her um, shop on Etsy is called Oh Gnome You Did Not. And I will link all of those talented ladies below in the description of the video. After making a lot of these, this is the way that I found was easiest to make gnomes. So with that said, let's grab some supplies and get started. Now, the first thing you're going to need is some cotton gloves and you can find these just about anywhere. My local grocery store even has them. Um, it's fun. You can find some that have different patterns or these have gold glitter in them. And so be creative. Uh, but if you can only find plain colors, that works perfectly as well. You can also look for gloves to match the decor of your Christmas tree. Then the star of this cute little gnome is the fur. This is craft fur that I found at Joann's and it's super inexpensive. Uh, you don't use very much of it, so a little goes a long way. You can also buy it by the yard. I got this at Hobby Lobby. Um, it was a quarter yard and I have tons and tons of fur for future products. It was also a nicer quality than the smaller pieces of the fur that I got at Joann's. My least favorite was some fur that I got as it's a fur trim and it works fine. It just wasn't as long and fluffy and didn't give me as full of a beard. So this was probably my least favorite, but I'll link a bunch of options below. And then for the nose, I'm using little wooden beads. I will link these below as well. It's fun to play around with the different sizes of the beads because you can get different sizes of noses. You could also use a little ball of clay or um, even a pom-pom would work great for the nose. And then I have some polyfill, and this is just going to give our, we're gonna use these to fill our little gnomes. You can also use cotton balls. Um, what you'd wanna do is just grab your cotton ball and kind of pull it apart so it's not as compact. This is a great option if you don't have polyfill. The other thing you could do, I have actually taken apart an old pillow before and used the filling from inside of that to kind of upcycle and that gave me some perfect filling for my gnomes. I have some cute little decorations to add to my gnomes. This is some greenery. Um, you just use the tiniest piece of it. I have some little jingle bells, some snowflake buttons, and then this cute sparkly trim. Uh, decorating them is totally optional. I actually prefer them plain. I think they more look more rustic and mischievous, but it's up to you. I've also got some cotton balls that you could add to the very tips of their hats or even use these as noses. I've got some embroidery floss. This is how we are going to turn our gnomes into Christmas ornaments. We'll be threading this through the top of the hat so we can hang it. Then I've got, we want something to seal the top of the gnomes. So sometimes I use dental floss. It's awesome because of the wax on it, when you tie it, it stays in place. So it's great for crafts. You could also use embroidery floss or my personal favorite is these little tiny um, hair elastics. I have my trusty glue gun set on low. You know when I make fairies, I always keep my glue gun on low. It's super important for this project. I have a sharp pair of scissors and then to cut our fur, it's actually best to use a razor blade. Um, you can use scissors and I'll explain both ways, but we'll be using the razor blade to cut the fur. Step one, we're gonna cut the fingers off the tips of the gloves. And as soon as I have a whole bunch of them, I start matching them together and decide which side I want the hat to be and which side I want the bottom to be. And one fun thing to do is use the patterned ones as the bottom of your gnome and then put the patterned part on the back. So if it kind of turns around on the Christmas trees, you see the cute pattern on the back of the gnome. Then we're gonna make a little pattern. Um, you can measure directly onto the fur. I just grabbed a piece of cardstock, measured one inch by an inch and a fourth, cut it out, and then I don't have to get my ruler out every single time I'm cutting the fur. So once I have that all cut out, I'm going to grab my fur and we're going to line it up so it's an inch wide and an inch and a half long. And we want to make sure that the long part is going in the direction of the fur. And then to use the razor blade, you're gonna take your hands and kind of pull on the fabric from the back. We're cutting it from the back and you can see that by 
applying pressure to both sides with your fingers as you run the razor blade along the back of the fabric. It just cuts the fabric. You just kind of slowly take it across the fabric and it will easily take that apart without cutting into the fur because what we want the fur to be long and full and not cut off at weird angles. And then you can see, I just peel that back and I have this beautiful piece of fur and then more fur, fur to use for future gnomes. So you can see if we had just cut it straight across, it would have cut all of that long part of the beard off. So by cutting it from the back, you get a nice full beard and it just works better with the fur. So here I am doing it again. I'm using my two fingers to stretch the material and I'm just cutting the fabric from the back. I did notice that the more expensive fur, the nicer fur that I got from Hobby Lobby was a little bit harder to cut, but it was just because it was a little bit thicker. And then to use scissors to cut the fur, once again, you wanna start at the back and you want to slide the tip of the scissors right against the fabric. And I like to flip it over and make sure that I'm not cutting the fur as I'm going. Um, the razor blade does work better, but if you are gonna use scissors, remember to cut from the back and slide those scissors right up against the fabric instead of cutting through the fur. So we have all of our cute little beards. I'm gonna set those aside, grab my polyfill and start filling the fingertips I've chosen for the bottom parts of my gnomes. You can fill these as full as you'd like. It's fun because you can get different sizes of gnomes. So I want, I have it evenly filled and I kind of pinch it and roll it around a little bit to make sure that that filling is in there evenly. I'm going to seal it off. So you could e either use thread. I'm gonna show you how I use the dental floss. This is actually what I used when I made little girl's hair accessories because when you tie it, it stays in place and you don't, um, it doesn't come unraveled while you're trying to tie it in a knot because that wax just holds it in place. Uh, but the easiest, I think, honestly, is using these little tiny poly bands, just little hair elastics, and you just twist it around a couple times and you're good to go. So I do that with all of the bottoms of my gnomes. And now we're going to move on to the hats. So to make the hat, I roll up the glove like you're making a little hat for your finger. And then I slide my finger into it and I'm going to pinch the top of it in the opposite direction that the finger folds. So I'm going to take it, push my finger up in it and pinch it in the opposite direction. And we're going to add a dab of glue to give our little hats some dimension. So I'm going to continue pinching the fabric and I'm going to roll the fingertip back and put a little tiny dab of glue right where I'm pinching. And I hold it for a second, let that glue set. And when you unroll it, you have more dimension in the top of the hat so it's not just laying flat. And this is fun because I feel like it gives the hats more personality. This part is optional. You could just put it directly on, but I think it's just a fun thing to add to the gnome. So here I am doing it again. This is a shorter hat. I had fun playing around with the sizes of the hats. I made some gnomes with big tall hats and some with little hats. And you're just following that same method, pinching it the opposite direction, rolling it back, adding that dab of glue to give it some more shape. And now we're ready to start assembling our gnomes. So I actually put the noses on last. The first thing I do is I take my fur and you can see I rounded off the corners just a little bit. I did that by taking my scissors and just barely snipping the corner of the fabric off. Once again, not the fur, just the fabric. And then I'm going to take my glue gun and line completely around the edges of the fur on the back. And I'm going to grab the bottom of my gnome and glue it right under where that elastic or where you've tied it off. And then hold it in place for a second so that it can set. And you can see the cute little snowflakes on the back of this gnome. And then I like to make sure that I have glue on all of the corners so that all of the edges are laying flat against the base of our gnome. And then I follow that same step for my other gnomes just putting the glue right around the edges, making sure that all of the edges are glued down nicely and making sure that that fur will stay in place. Then we're going to add the hats and the noses. So I get all of my noses ready so I can easily access them. I'm going to grab the hat and I'm going to pull it down over the fur at the top. And you can pull it down as much as you'd like to have as much of that beard showing as you'd like. And I arrange it and make sure that it's laying nice and then once I have it ready, I'm gonna flip it to the back. I'm going to take my fingers and pinch the back of the gnome and the front of the hat and hold that in place while I tack down the back of the hat. 
So this makes it so that that hat isn't moving around while I glue it down in the back. And then I press to hold that glue until it sets, flip the gnome over, and now it's not going to move around a ton and I can decide where I want the nose to go. So you can use a needle or even just your fingertips and fingernails to kind of just push the fur aside a little bit. I decide where I want my nose to go and have that all ready. And then I'm going to grab the little bead. And when you're doing the bead on the gnome, make sure that the hole for the bead is going up and down, so vertical. And I kind of tilt it at an angle so that the bottom of the hole is kind of pressing more into the fur and then I can pull the hat over the top of the hole so you're not seeing any of that. Then I'm going to pull the hat up and just add a few dabs of glue to tack the hat in place in the front, making sure that we cover the little hole for the nose. So just a little bit of glue, and then you pull the hat down and over the nose, and I kind of tuck it around the bead so just his little nose is poking out. And it's so funny to me how much personality these suddenly get the second you add the nose. So we have our first cute little gnome. Now moving on to the next one, another option you can have with the hats is you can take a little bit of that polyfill and put it inside the hat. And this will just create a fuller hat that has more shape. So just adding a little bit of that polyfill and then I follow the same steps. I put the hat, push it down over the fur and arrange it as I go, making sure I like how it fits. And then I'm going to flip it over and I put one finger on the front of the hat and one finger on the back of the gnome and I pinch it down so that that hat stays in place. I push the little hat up, put some glue to hold that down, press it down until the glue sets and then flip it over, decide where you want the nose, add a dab of glue to the nose, and when I lay it down, I'm paying attention to where that hole is, and once that has set, I'm going to add a little bit more glue to the top and tuck the hat down around over the nose. Now to make these into ornaments, we're going to grab our needle and thread, and I cut off a very long piece of my thread. Thread it through the needle, and then what I'm going to do is with this one I decided to fold over the top of the hat a little bit to give it some more shape and character. So I'm just taking the thread right through the top part of the hat and I decide how long I want it to be. I cut off a piece of it, tie it, and I've got my first ornament. And this way I'm not re-threading my needle every single time. And then to hold that little piece that we have flapping over down, I just added a tiny dab of glue and it just gave this little gnome some more character and personality. So then I follow those same steps. I just take my needle, take it right through the tip of the hat. And on this one, I'm not folding it down. I'm just leaving it straight up and down. So you just take it through the very tip of the hat, get it the length you want it, cut it, tie it off. And once again, I'm not having to re-thread my needle. And this is how I turned them into Christmas ornaments. The last thing we're going to do is to add some little decorations. This part is optional. I think they're super cute, just like this. I think they look like rugged, mischievous little gnomes. But if you want to make them a little bit fancier, you can decorate the tops of the hat. So I just clipped a little bit of this greenery and I took a tiny piece of it, added a tiny dab of glue and just put it right up on the corner of the hat. You could do this with the jingle bells. You could do this with buttons. You could add pom-poms to the tips of the hats. I would love to see what you all create. You can share your gnomes with me with the hashtag untidyartistgnome. I'm excited to give these to my daughter. I think her tree is going to be darling. I actually put a few of these on a gift I gave away the other day. And these are just such a fun, happy, little funny thing to add to your Christmas. They're quirky, they're sweet, and it was just what I needed for 2020. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do. That would be awesome. Check out some of my other tutorials. I do lots of fairy dolls. I have lots of fun Christmas and holiday decorations on my YouTube channel. And if you have any thoughts or questions or other videos you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below. Thanks you guys. We'll see you next time.